Hey guys, it's Baba here, and I've got another story today. So today's story is Amos and Boris, and it's by William Steg. Steg? Steg? I don't know. Um, but I think you're going to like it. And this is specifically dedicated to the nieces and nephews at this moment um, in May 2024. That is Max and Mason and Harper. All right, so here we go. Amos and Boris. It looks like it's about a whale. We'll find out. And this is for Maggie and Melinda. Amos, a mouse, lived by the ocean. He loved the ocean. He loved the smell of the sea air. He loved to hear the surf sounds, the bursting breakers, the backwashes, and the rolling pebbles. Look, there's Amos. You see Amos? And there is the ocean. I love the sound of the ocean. And it looks like Amos does too, right? And there he is. He's just watching it. He thought a lot about the ocean and he wondered about the faraway places on the other side of the water. One day he started building a boat on the beach and he worked on it in the daytime while at night he studied navigation. There he is, he's working on the boat, he's working hard. Look, he's putting up the mast. And there's Amos, the boat's coming together. Oh, now it's got paint. He's got a ladder up there. Oh, he's raising the sail. Okay, when the boat was finished, it looks like it's finished here. He loaded it with cheese and biscuits, acorns, honey, wheat germ, two barrels of fresh water, a compass, a sextant, a telescope, a saw, a hammer and nails, and some wood in case repairs should be necessary, a needle and thread for the mending of torn sails, and various other necessities, such as bandages and iodine and a yo-yo and playing cards. Look, all of that stuff. Those are some pretty good supplies. I really love that he's bringing a yo-yo. And the playing cards. On the 6th of September, with a very calm sea, he waited till the high tide had almost reached his boat. Then, using his most savage strength, he just managed to push the boat into the water and climbed on board and set sail. Look at him. He's pushing that boat and he's going to jump in right there. The rodent, for that was the boat's name, prov proved to be very well made and very well suited to the sea. And Amos, for one, after one miserable day of seasickness, proved to be a natural sailor, very well suited to the ship. He was enjoying his trip immensely. It was beautiful weather. Day and night, he moved up and down, up and down on waves as high and big as mountains. And he was full of wonder, full of enterprise, and full of love for life. Look at that. He's going up and down and up and down on the waves. That's pretty cool. One night in the phosphorescent sea. He marveled at the sight of some whales spouting luminous water and later lying on the deck of his boat, gazing at the immense starry sky, the tiny mouse Amos, a little speck of a living thing in the vast living universe, felt thoroughly akin to it all, overwhelmed by the beauty and the mystery of everything. He rolled over and over and over right off the deck of his boat and into the sea. Oh no! Shh, splash! That's really scary. Do you think he can swim? Help! He 
squeaked as he grabbed desperately at the rodent, but it evaded his grasp and went bowling along under full sail, and he never saw it again. Look at that, his boat just sailed away, and he's stuck. And there he was. Where? In the middle of the immense ocean, a thousand miles from the nearest shore, with no one else in sight as far as the eye could see, and not even so much as a stick of driftwood to hold on to. Oh, should I try to swim home, Amos wondered? Or should I just try to stay afloat? Oh, he might swim a mile, but never a thousand. He decided to just keep afloat, treading water and hoping that something, who knows what, would turn up to save him. Oh, but what if a shark or some big fish or a horse mackerel turned up? What was he supposed to do to protect himself? He didn't know. That's really scary. Oh. Morning came, as it always does, and he was getting terribly tired. He was very small and very cold and very wet, and he was a worried mouse. There was still nothing in sight but the empty sea. And then, as if things weren't bad enough, it started to rain. At last the rain stopped and the noonday sun gave him a bite of cheer and warmth as the vast, in the vast loneliness. But his strength was giving out. He began to wonder what it would be like to drown. Would it take very long? Would it feel just awful? Would his soul go to heaven? Would there be other mice there? And as he was asking himself these dreadful questions, a huge head burst through the surface of the water and loomed over him. It was a whale. What sort of fish are you? The whale asked. You must be one of a kind. Well, I'm not a fish, said Amos. I'm a mouse, which is a mammal, the highest form of life. I live on the land. Holy clam and cuttlefish, said the whale. I'm a mammal myself, though I live in the sea. Call me Boris, he added. Oh, oh. So Amos introduced himself and told Boris that he came to be there in the how he came to be there in the middle of the ocean. The whale said he would be happy to take Amos to the Ivory Coast of Africa, where he happened to be headed anyway, to attend a meeting of the whales from all of the seven seas. But Amos said he'd had enough adventure for, uh, he'd had enough adventure to last him for a little while. He wanted only to get back home and hoped the whale wouldn't mind going out of his way to take him there. Well, not only would I mind, said Boris, I would consider it a privilege. Wow. Huh. What other whale in the world ever had the chance to get to know such a creature as strange as you. Please climb aboard. And Amos got on Boris's back. Are you sure you're a mammal? Amos asked. You smell more like a fish. Then Boris the whale went swimming along and with Amos the mouse on his back. Look at that. I think that would be a lot of fun, don't you? What a relief to be safe. So secure again, Amos lay down in the sun and being worn to a frazzle, he was soon asleep. Then all of a sudden he was in the water again wide awake, spluttering and splashing about. Boris had forgotten for a moment that he was had a passenger on his back and had sounded. When he realized his mistake, he surfed so quickly that Amos sent, was sent somersaulting, tail over whiskers, high into the air. Hitting the water hurt. Crazy with rage, Amos screamed and punched at Boris until he remembered, oh, he owed his life to the whale, and he quietly climbed back on his back. 
From then on, whenever Boris wanted to sound, he warned Amos in advance and got his okay. And whenever he sounded, Amos took a swim. Oh, that sounds like fun. Swimming along, sometimes at great speed, sometimes slowly and leisurely, sometimes resting and exchanging ideas, sometimes stopping to sleep. During that time, they developed a deep admiration for one another. Boris admired the delicacy, the quivering daintiness, the light touch, the small voice, the gem-like radiance of the mouse. Amos admired the bulk, the grandeur, the power, the purpose, the rich voice, and the abounding friendliness of the whale. Look, I think they're becoming friends. Ah. They became, oh, I think so, they became the closest possible friends. They told each other about their lives, their ambitions, they shared their deepest secrets with each other. The whale was very curious about life on land and very sorry uh, he would never experience it. Amos was fascinated by the whale's accounts of what went on deep under the sea. Amos sometimes enjoyed running up and down the whale's back for exercise. When he was hungry, he ate plankton. The only thing that he missed was fresh, unsalty water. <sighs> the time came to say goodbye. They were at the shore. Oh, I wish we could be friends forever, but we can't be together, said Boris. We will always be friends. You must live on land and I must live on sea. I'll never forget you though. And you can be sure I'll never forget you, said Amos. I will always be grateful to you for saving my life. And I want you to remember that if you ever need my help, I'd be more than happy to give it. How he could ever possibly help Boris, Amos didn't know, but he knew how willing he was. The whale couldn't take Amos all the way to the land. They said their last goodbyes and Amos dived off Boris's back and swam to the sand. I think he's happy to be home, don't you? From the top of a cliff, he watched Boris spout twice and disappear. Boris laughed to himself. <laughs> How could that little mouse ever help me? Little as he is, he's all heart. I love him and I'm gonna miss him terribly. Boris went to the conference off the Ivory Coast of Africa and then went back to a life of wailing about while Amos returned to his life of mousing around. They were both very happy. Many years after the incidents just described, when Amos was no longer a very young mouse, and when Boris was no, no longer a very young whale, there occurred one of the worst storms of the century, Hurricane Yetta. And it just so happened that Boris the whale was flung ashore by a tidal wave and stranded on the very shore where Amos happened to make his home. Look at that. Look how yellow the sky is. Ooh, that's scary. He looks pretty scared there too, right? It also just so happened that when the storm had cleared and Boris was lying high and dry on the stand, losing his moisture in the hot sun and needing desperately to be back on the water, Amos came down to the beach to see how much damage Hurricane Yetta had done. Of course, Boris and Amos recognized each other at once. I don't have to tell you how these old friends felt at meeting again in this desperate situation. Amos rushed towards Boris. Boris could only look back at Amos. Look, oh, he looks so sad. Look at Amos. You think he's happy to see his old friend? 
think he might be a little scared. Amos, help me, said the mountain of a whale to the moat of a mouse. I think I'll die if I don't get back into the water soon. Amos gazed at Boris in an agony of pity. He realized he had to do something very fast and had to think very fast about what it was he had to do. Suddenly he was gone. <gasps> well, I'm afraid he won't be able to help me, said Boris to himself. Much as he want to do, wants to do something, what can such a little fellow do? Uh, I don't know. What do you think he can do? Do you think he'll find some help? Just as Amos had once felt all alone in the middle of the ocean, Boris now felt lying alone on the shore. He was sure that he would die. And he, and just as he was preparing to die, Amos came racing back with two of the biggest elephants that he could find. What? Amos found elephants? Look at that. There's Amos. The elephants. Do you think the elephants are going to be able to help Boris? What do you think? Without wasting any time, oh, maybe, without wasting any time, these two good-hearted elephants got to pushing with all of their might at Boris's huge body until he began turning over, breaded with sand. Look, he's covered in sand. And rolling down toward the sea, Amos standing on the head. Oh, look at him, he's so small. Amos, standing on the head of one of the elephants, yelled instructions, but no one heard him. In a few minutes, Boris was already in the water with waves washing at him, and he was feeling the wonderful wetness. You have got to be out of the sea, really, to know how good it is to be in it, he thought. That is if you're a whale. <laughs> and soon he was able to wiggle and wiggle deeper into the water. Look at that. Look. Wow. It looks like he feels a lot better. He looked back at Amos. On the elephant's head, there's Boris. Tears were rolling down. There's a tear, can you see it? Tears were rolling down the great whale's cheeks. The tiny mouse had tears in his eyes too. Oh, goodbye, old friend, squeaked Amos. Goodbye, dear friend, rumbled Boris, and he disappeared in the waves. They knew they might never meet again, and they knew they would never forget each other. Wow. That's a really cool story. I hope you guys enjoyed that. All right. I love you guys, and I'll see you later. Baba out. <laughs>